So another problem with being perceptible is easy to understand in our contemporary digital context. This is a problem we might summarize as what I call the motivational problem. Being perceptible or being perceived triggers dopamine and dopamine hits train you to do more of whatever got you the dopamine. So the more your motivation relies on dopamine via perceivability, the more surely you're not going to be creating original and longer form, long-term projects, simply because such projects require long periods of, almost by definition, zero perceivability. So when Deleuze and Guattari say that they tell you to, quote unquote, bring something incomprehensible into the world, this is what they're really trying to say. They're not saying that any old nonsense should be brought into the world or that ideas or artworks should be impenetrable by design. What they're really saying is that nothing worth thinking, saying, or making will pre-fit the perceptual schemas of others in advance. What they're saying is that all worthy creative projects are incomprehensible at first when they're initially brought into the world. I mean, any project that is immediately comprehensible is almost by definition the product of some opportunistically filling of some kind of currently pre-existing schema of perception in the minds of other people already out there. That is the opposite of creation in a sense. That type of work is taking orders essentially from arbitrary social opinion dynamics. And guess where those opinions are most likely to come from? Guess the higher function those opinions are most likely to serve? Hint basically reinforcing the status quo. They're not really railing against clear communication or transparent self-presentation as a lot of people think they are. They're railing against anyone who creates in order to be valued from within an, any already existing schema of perception. Perfectly normal communication and clear self-presentation can totally scramble perceptions, actually. And even the most esoteric, anonymous, scrambled communications can be slavishly pre-fit to pre-existing perceptions. If one is not creating on the fuel provided by immediate recognition, then how is the work of creation motivated in this period of zero perceivability? I think the answer is that to create anything other than reproductions of the status quo requires a different kind of motivational system. And I think this is really what they're driving at. Lo and behold, uh, Deleuze and Guattari offer precisely a kind of alternative motivational system, I would argue, which at every point is contrasted to capture by perceivability. In their language, they advise one to construct what they call a plane of imminence, which I think you should interpret as a kind of quote unquote degaff or don't give a fuck gesture of creative violence in which intrinsically self-rewarding dynamics are unleashed. And then working on those self-rewarding dynamics as a labor of love. The secret always has to do with love, they say in A Thousand Plateaus. But this is no cliche. While half of their analyses are about the mechanisms of domination, the other half is dedicated to modeling in exquisite detail what this labor of love involves, what it requires, and, and how to do it exactly. If you can't access such a state, it might be because you are the one who's captured, if not by perceivability, but also possibly by some other trap. For instance, when you think to yourself, is this good enough? Is it worth it? These are questions which usually veil a hidden kind of what will people think about it? And thus becoming imperceptible is about constituting a different kind of project on a fundamentally different motivational system. I really think that's what they're driving at with this concept. They're pointing to a system of imminent, intrinsically self-motivating creative productivity rather than a mediated, extrinsic kind of alienated toil, the satisfaction of which is always out of reach even if temporary recognitions are one. So to make an irresistible reference back to the Twitter delusions with which we began this video series, it is, I think, some vindication of my contention here that the digital masks of these individuals do not seem to help in the slightest with this problem of capture by perceivability. For many of these people are prolific with short bursts of creative possibility, no doubt. I'm not ragging on them at all. But it's usually so long as they receive a perceptual payment of dopamine. They still require this kind of being seen on the internet to motivate their various textual emissions. But very rarely do these individuals bring such creative bursts 
to the constitution of what Deleuze and Guattari called the plane of imminence. They're not really able to constitute a long-term independent creative project in many cases. And this is because, as we will see, the mask is also a kind of face. And so to wrap this video up, the problem of being perceived is the problem of capture. It's a kind of susceptibility to manipulation and a losing of the ability to create and execute works of substance.